Hi, my name is Alex from APC Dynamics, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the general layout of Business Central. First, I'll go over the different page types that you're going to encounter while you're working with Business Central. There's list page, card page, document page, worksheet page. Now, there are a couple other different page types that you'll see in Business Central, but these four are the ones that I'm going to be focused on. Next, I'm going to talk about the field types that you're going to encounter in Business Central. Of course, there are normal field types where you just enter information. The interesting types I'm going to cover are the drop downs, the lookup fields, and the drill down fields. Let's get started. When you click on to any records in Business Central, the first page you're going to see is a list page. A list page pretty much gives you a list of the different records in the particular records that you're clicking into. With any page, you're going to get the title area. The title area is where you're going to have the different actions that you can take against a particular record you're on. And you're going to have a fact box to the right. On the list page, you can sort on any of the fields that you see on the screen. So for example, if I want to sort on the number, either in a ascending or descending order, all I need to do is click on this captions area. And the list page is where you can also do searches. So if I click on this binocular screen, and let's say if I, I want to search on a particular keyword. So if I search on the word the, it's going to give you all of the records that has the characters T-H-E in there. So in this case, I got the Canon group, and the reason why the second record came up because we have Matthews. So it will search on any of the fields that you type in. Also on the list page, you can set filters. So if I click on this filter icon on my left, left side, I'll be able to add the filters onto this page. Let's say I want to filter on all customers in the blue location code. So I'm going to add the field blue. And now my page will be filtered with the location code of blue. If I want to save this filter, I could save this particular view by clicking on the save button. Once I save it, I'll be able to click on this particular view and apply the filters when I come back to the customer record. So let's say if I go back to my main menu and I click on customers, bring up my filter menu. And if I click on the blue location items, it will give me all of the blue customers. Now on the fact box, you'll see that the information on the fact box will update depending on the records that I'm on. You can toggle whether or not you want to see the fact box by clicking on this fact box button here. So going through here, let's say I found the customer that I want. When I click on a specific record in the list page, it will bring up the card page. Card page basically gives you a more detailed view of the particular record that you're looking at. Same thing, I got my title information where I could perform my actions. On my right hand side, I got my fact box. And same thing, you could toggle the fact box on and off. Now, with any pages, you're going to have a list of actions that you can take. Anything to the left of this divider are shortcuts. To the right of the divider is where you're going to have all the functions that you can do with this, in this case, the customer. You're going to have the action and the related. The action is basically any actions that you're going to take with the record that you are currently on. So in this case, if I go to the new documents, I can create a new sales order against this customer. I can register customer payments against this customer. So basically anything that you're going to do with the record, it would fall under the actions menu. Now the related is any information related to the customer. Okay, so if I want to see the ledger entries for this customers, it's going to be under the related. If I want to see any kind of uh, sales prices that I've set up for this customer, it's going to be under related. So the difference between action and related is action is, is the action that you're going to take against the customer. The related is any information related to the customer. And reports is just reports for this particular record. And automate allows you to create flows using Power Automate against this particular record. And you're going to see this repeated throughout every record that you click into. So for example, if I go to the vendors, you're going to see the title section, the fact boxes, and the list page. If I click on a particular record, it's going to give me the card page. And you're going to have the action and the related. Now, if I go to the items, it's going to bring up the list first. It's going to have my title page. I can toggle on and off the fact box. And if I click into the record, it's going to give me the car page. 
the next type of page I'm going to talk about are the document page. The document page are typically your sales orders, purchase orders, credit memos. So if I bring up a sales order, same thing, it's going to give me a list page that displays all of the sales orders that are in the system. If I click the same concept, you have your title area, you have your fact boxes, you could set the filters and you could sort. Okay, so any concepts that I spoke about on the list pages will apply to, in this case, the sales order page as well. So if I click on a particular sales order, it's gonna bring up the document page. The document page looks very similar to the car page with the exception of this area where you can enter itemized details for this particular record. So I have the header, which is a sales order header, and the lines, the sales line, which holds the items that I'm gonna be selling to the customer. In any car type page, the data is gonna be grouped into this fast tabs. So under general, this is where all of the general information for the sales order is gonna be. The invoice detail is gonna have the invoice details for the sales order and you could expand and hide fast tabs. Similar to the car page, you have your actions that allows you to take any actions against this particular sales order and you have your related, which is any information related to this particular sales order. If I bring up the purchase order, same exact thing. It's gonna give me the list page. If I click on a purchase order, it's gonna give me the document page that has my header information and the line details. And the last type of page that you're gonna see most often in Business Central is called the worksheet page. The worksheet page is basically something like a general journal or a cash receipt journal or payment journal. Very similar to any other pages, you're gonna have your separator with the left being the shortcut and on the right is where all the functions are being stored. Action is anything you're gonna do with the journal and anything related is information related to the entry that you're entering. So on the general journal, you could type in any kind of, any type of information. So you could enter the GL account, enter the amount, and to balance out these this GL account, you could enter a second account. So the worksheet page is essentially a page that allows you to enter transactions into Business Central to be posted into the ledger entry. Again, this is most typically found in any type of journals that you're gonna see in Business Central. All right, so that was a general overview of the different page types you're going to see in Business Central. Next, I'll talk about the different field types that you're going to see when you're working with Business Central. Uh, of course, there's normal fields. I'm not going to talk too much about that. The more interesting fields that you're going to see in Business Central are the drop down, the lookup, and the drill down. So let's take a look at those. To demonstrate the different field types, I'm just going to use the item card. The first type of field that you're going to see is the call the drop down. So when you click on this down arrow here, it's going to give you a predefined list. This list is pre-programmed, so you're not going to be able to edit the contents of the list. You can only select from it. So that's the drop down. The second field you're going to find is called the lookup. It has very similar, but when you drop down, you'll see that the page that comes up is a little different. You're able to select from a predefined list, but you could also click on new to add new to this list. Or if you want to make edits to this list, you could just click on select from the full list and click on edit list. And you'll be able to edit the contents of the list that you can choose from. The last field that you're gonna see is called the flow field or the drill down field. The drill down field are typically a calculated value. In this example, if I'm looking at quantity, this field tells me that I have a total of 344 in the system. If I want to know the details of what makes up this 344, I could click on the drill down and it's gonna give me all of the detailed transactions. Same thing, if I look at my quantity on purchase order, I drill down on my quantity purchase order, it's gonna give me all of the quantities that are on the purchase order. And that's it. If you have any issues or questions on the general layout business central, please let me know.